potato is the fourth largest crop in the world, with global production of 374 million tonnes. In New Zealand, more than half a million tonnes of potatoes are produced each year, primarily for domestic consumption or processed for export as fries and crisps. For 40 years, the potato breeding program at Plant and Food Research has been developing new cultivars for the New Zealand market, such as Moonlight, Red Rascal and Purple Heart. The program looks to develop cultivars that excite the consumer and with traits that meet the requirements of growers and processors, as Potatoes New Zealand Chief Executive Champak Mehta explains. It's very important that we have a local breeding program because that helps us to, um, to have potato cultivars that are a, more attuned to New Zealand growing conditions, but also we can respond more quickly to changing consumer preferences and flavour and usage. So we've got two markets that we focus on, the domestic market and the export market. In the domestic market we've seen a change in flavour and usage. So we, we traditionally we used to have a lot of roasts and mashed potatoes, we now eat a lot of salads that have potatoes in them and they require a different flavour profile. And similarly in Asia we've got a lot of consumers who previously haven't been eating potatoes who are now incorporating potatoes as elements of a Western diet into their traditional diets. And so those changing preferences are something we need to respond to quickly and effectively. And a local breeding program allows us to do that a lot quicker than if we imported uh, cultivars from offshore. There was talk in the past about a super potato. So, um, you know, a potato that fits all purposes, but over the years we've seen that there's distinct markets and and they actually, the, 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 the characteristics you want for one market are quite the opposite for another market. All potatoes require commercial yield that supplies the grower and the market with a good value. Next probably level you would want something that requires as little input as possible in terms of disease and pest control. We can breed a variety that's resistant to a certain disease. Another way of approaching that is to use agronomy where we spray fungicides. Uh, or use insecticides, but the more we can package in all varieties in terms of resistance, the better in terms of economy. Basically the material is planted and there's less inputs through the growing process. So yield's important and doing that efficiently is important. Next layer would be looking at the quality or the evenness, the stability of the potato, both in shape and in yield across different regions of production. New Zealand has potato growing regions at both ends of the country, with different environments that can impact on production. The breeding program also has sites in both regions, which allows breeders to test new cultivars under diverse conditions and respond quickly to the changing needs of the industry, as breeder John Anderson explains. In the early years when cis nematode was recognised by the potato industry as by far the greatest problem that the industry was facing and there was pressure for it to be the major priority within our breeding program. In 1988, the government removed the regulations around the potato cyst nematode, and much more emphasis was placed on other disease pressures, certainly late blight, powdery scab became a very important disease for us to work on as appearance of potatoes became more important. And with the increasing move towards processing, Resistance to cold-induced sweetening became another major priority of our program and one of the successes there, we had a very successful parent, Crop 20, which has been a very good parent for resistance to cold-induced sweetening. And in 2006-2007, with the arrival of a tomato and potato salad, the problems with the salad and the associated zebra chip become absolutely the key problems facing the potato industry and have become major issues which we need to face in the breeding program. The breeding process starts with the selection of parents. We choose two, two parents that we have, have characteristics that we think are important. If we're successful with a cross between these parents, we come up with a little berry. And this berry, if you squash it open, has a number of seeds inside. Each seed is genetically different and potentially a new cultivar. Each year we grow 35,000 odd small seedlings from these seeds and over a period of 8 to 10 years we gradually whittle them away by throwing out the ones we think have got less potential to end up with a new cultivar. So over the last maybe 30 years there's been a change in technology in terms of how we assess potatoes. 
So potato breeding has two main components. One where we actually uh, generate diversity. We cross parents and we get uh, different combinations of characteristics. We get the true seed. And the second, uh, more expensive phase, long-term phase, is screening that material, looking for something that is of value. So it's like a filter. Does it fit this market, that market? Does it handle the seasons? So in terms of our screening process, we've been focusing on phenotypic methods, looking at uh, challenging the potato lines with different pests and diseases and environments. And we're looking at how or what we can observe, how we see they respond. But in 2011, Plant and Food was part of the, the Potato uh, Sequencing Consortium that looked at um, sequencing the potato genome. So we're now looking at whether we can use molecular markers. So the equivalent of looking at a plan for a, a car and saying this car can perform in a certain way versus actually driving it. And so the cost differences, do you actually produce a cross and can you can you screen it in the very early years without actually growing it for years in the field across environments with all the subsequent cost? So essentially, markers, which we're sort of involved in the initial development of, is, uh, has the potential to reduce our screening costs and speed up the time from doing a cross to producing a commercial variety. The potato breeding program at Plant and Food Research has a strong history in developing cultivars that meet the requirements of the New Zealand potato industry and allow it to rapidly address the future needs of both the domestic and the export market.